This is the fifth section of the Poisson distributions chapter. So, uh, and this is finding the mean and variance of a binomial distribution. So far, you know how to find the mean and variance from a table, from a frequency table, also from a Poisson distribution. Now we're going to be looking at finding the mean and variance from a binomial distribution. So here's our binomial distribution with n, the uh, number of trials. Uh, P is the probability of success. Well, if we want to find the mean of this, the mean uh, we can write as E x, E of x, or mu. And to find that, we just do n times P. Yeah. When you do two tail tests, you know that you will use m, n times P to help you decide whether to do an upper tail or a lower tail test because you compare than what you observe to NP. You're actually comparing the observed values to the mean. And if the observed values is less than the mean, you do a lower tail test. If the observed values are greater than the mean, you do an upper tail test. So that's why we compare it to N times P, because it's the mean. Then the variance of the binomial distribution, we use var x as well, like we did with the Poisson distribution. So that's sigma squared. And the way we do that, that's NP, so that's basically the mean, times by 1 minus P. So that bit, you're basically doing the mean times by the probability of failure. Okay, and doing that calculation will give you the variance. Obviously, we square root it to find the standard deviation. Okay, a fair five-sided spinner is spun 20 times. Uh, the random variable x represents the number of fives obtained. Part A, find the mean and variance of x. Well, what type of distribution is this? Well, it's a binomial distribution because we have a fixed number of trials and the probability of success obtaining a, um, a five is one-fifth. So then the mean of this distribution is m times p. So that's going to be 20 times the fifth, which is 4. So there's my mean e of x. And the variance of this distribution is going to be n times p times 1 minus p. So that's going to be 20 times the fifth again, which I know is 4 times by 1 minus a fifth, 1 minus p. So I get 4 times 4 fifths, which is 16 over 5, which is 3.2. OK, so there's my variance. Part B, find the probability that x is less than the mean minus the standard deviation. So be careful here. Um, it's not the standard deviation here. So it's not the variance. So make sure you square root it. And because we're relying on an answer from part A, it really it's really important we get that part right. So let's substitute the numbers in. So the mean was 4. And the standard deviation is going to be the square root of 3.2. So don't put 3.2 there. You'll get it wrong. Right, so that's a probability that x is less than which number does that become once we work that out. Um, it's like 2.2111 like that. Okay, we need to turn it into a whole number. So it's less than or equal to 2. Yeah, we're going above 2, but we haven't reached 3. So um, if you want to find this, let's just write this down. So we've got this binomial distribution, 20 and a fifth. And we want to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 2, which means uh, when we do menu in 7, we want binomial CD. So we'll press 1 in the variable. And x will be 2. 
n will be 20 and p will be a fifth 0 0.2 and we get an answer of 0 0.2061 to four decimal places yeah so remember these distribution answers would give the answer to four decimal places because the tables go to four decimal places a company produces a certain type of delicate component. The probability of any one component being defective is P. The probability of attaining at least one defective component in a sample of four is 0.3439. The company produces 600 components in a day. Find the mean and variance of the number of de uh, defective components produced per day. OK, so let's set up our distribution. So let's say that X represents the uh, number of uh, defects in our sample of four. Yeah, because we're taking a sample of four and we want to see how many defects there are now since uh, we have a fixed sample size of four this is going to be a binomial distribution oops b goes outside the brackets binomial distribution where n is four and p is p okay so we're going to have to work p out before we we go any further and uh the probability of obtaining at least one defective component. OK, so in this case, success is a defect. So at least one means one or more. OK, so from these two bits of information, we want to be able to work out what um, P is. Right, so the first thing to do is to change this into one minus the probability um, uh, the x less than or equal to zero and in fact that's the same as one minus the probability equal to zero and we know that this is equal to beginning the question 0.343 Three, nine. So let's just write this down here. One minus probability x equals zero. Naught point three four three nine. Okay, and um, we're going to have to sort of work this out manually in terms of working out the probabilities. The calculator is not really going to help. Um, so we're going to have to look back at how we worked out binomial from scratch. Um, in our uh, normal applied books but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take away one from both sides and we're going to get rid of those negatives so 0 0.3439 take away one okay so I'll get negative probability x equals zero equals negative 0 0.6531 so I've just 61 I've just taken away one from both sides then I'll times both sides by negative one now what I need to do is this bit here I want to work out well how do I do this manually how would I work out the probability of no successes manually okay if i've got no successes it means that they're all failures if i've got no successes let's write that down that's what this x equals zero so x equals zero means no successes okay successes they are all failures so that basically means that 
in our sample of four, all none of them are defective. That's what it means. Okay, so in our sample of four, there are no defects. Yeah, because in this case, uh, X stands for the number of defects in our sample of four. So if there are no defects, that means that um, all four of uh, the, th the components in our sample are not defective. OK, so basically. There's our um, non defects and all four of them. Are fine. Yeah, that's how we would work it out manually. Remember, um, the manual way of doing it, it would be NCR times by, we've got our, our failures and successes, where we have R successes and N minus R failures. So in this case, R would be zero. And n would be four because that's our sample size. So that's where this one minus p to the power four came from. So it came from basically this formula here. If you put r equal to zero, no successes, and n is four, sample of four, it becomes basically four c zero times by p to the power zero times by one minus p to the power four or four minus zero. So that's where that comes from. Right. Having got that out of the way, we can now move on. So here we've got 0 0.6561. So first thing I would do is do the full fruit of both sides. So one minus P is going to equal 0 0.6561, basic to the power a quarter or the full fruit. So one minus p. Uh, let's work that out. So um, null point or full fruit. So let's find my root button. There, full fruit null point six five six one. Oh, that's nice. We get null point nine for one minus p, which then means that p equals null point one. That's nice. Okay. Right, then we now need to use that. It says the, the factory comp uh, company produced 600 components in a day. Find a mean and variance of the number of defective components produced in a day. Right, so we need to come up with our distribution right over here. So Y is going to be number of defects or any other letter, it doesn't need to be Y in a day. So that's what that represents now. So that will be, whoops, not X, but Y will be a, a binomial distribution where in a day the sample is 600 and the probability of it being a defect is 0.1. And I need to find the mean d of x. So that's n times p, 600 times 0 0.1, which is 60. And the variance, I keep putting x, that should be y, shouldn't it? So e of y, sorry, var of y n times p, so that's 60, times by 1 minus p, or 1 minus p is 0 0.9, I've got that from before, so that will give me 54. Yeah, so most of that question was almost like what you do in normal maths, it was only the mean and variance which was the new bit, and um, just be aware on a question like this when you try to find p, think about the formula 
that allows you to work out the probability from scratch. You might need to do the same with Poisson. Once you know what E means and how to work out formulas with, with E in it, with a Poisson distribution, um, you should be able to work backwards and work out what P is, um, uh, given that you um, know the uh, lambda, for example. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 2F on pages 33 to 34. So just as a reminder, E of X are mean. So you can have this symbol as well. That's N times P. And the variance, which we write as far X or sigma squared NP times 1 minus p and then don't forget if you want to find the uh, standard deviation that's going to be the square root of that so just watch out for that it doesn't catch you out on a on a question